Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's real late on Hot 97. My name is Peter Rosenberg, and I'm very excited uh, for the first time ever, uh, at least that I know of. You've never been in this building before, right? No, I don't think so. First time ever at Hot 97, my man Skepta is in the building. Um, welcome, first of all. Yeah. Welcome to New York City. Welcome to Hot 97. I know you've been to New York many times before, but you've never been here before. And I was just asking you off the air. Um, people, of course, who listen to this show have been hearing me play Shut Down now for some time. I think I started playing it maybe, I don't know, three or four months ago? How long ago did, did Shut Down come out? Came out in March. And have you been uh, pleased, to say the least, with the reception to Shut Down? Yeah. Yeah, I understand it. I understand it, you know. Like, I get, at the time, at this time, like, whatever I would have put out with the heat on me now, like, it would have blown up. So, like, I'm happy that it was shut down because it's such a big tune. Oh. Know? Big tune it is, my friend. And, yeah. it, and it's um, and it's making its way to the U.S., and I think it'll continue to do more and more. I was, um, I was actually at, uh, I was at Wireless a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I was out there with uh, Charlesy, Right, and we were playing records, and uh, we were just going back and forth. And you know, I was trying to pop the crowd because I've been doing a bunch of stuff in the UK recently, and I've been uh, on one extra, and like I've been trying to get my knowledge up. And so I was, we were just dropping record for record, and then he goes to shut down. I see him put shut down up on the Serato. I'm like, my man, you're cheating. You can't. You, we weren't even there yet. I'm like, we can't go right to shut down because we know what's going to happen. And watching the reaction of people, not you even performing it, just seeing people react. 30,000 deep to hearing that song. You can tell that this is a record that actually really means something. Do you feel like you are um, sort of at the forefront of maybe the biggest moment that UK hip hop has ever had in terms of the opportunity to really go international? Um, like, I just think with music, like people need to like get to a point in their life where they understand themselves properly. You know what I'm saying? And I just feel like in London, I kind of get myself, I understand myself, like it's taken a lot of time, but as I've grown into a man, like I don't, I don't really care about a lot, a lot of things, like I just do like me and my, my brethren, we just be out there just, just going crazy and doing what we do, so it's funny how like before when I was trying to do stuff, I was trying to make songs like to go to America or whatever, or to go to like Japan or whatever, they would never work, you know what I'm saying, and as soon as I grew up and I knew myself and I didn't give a fuck about anything anymore, like all of a sudden it happens organically yeah, like people feel that vibe for me and like it's like yo like the fuck was skepta but like i didn't i don't even really try to make i don't i'm not making music to try and break america i'm just making my own music the music but, that you be making yeah how long ago did this whole process begin for you of really taking music seriously oh no it's been a good it's been a good 10 years it's been a good 10 like 10 12 years but like this like from that's not me it's been like i don't know like two years maybe like i just decided because i was coming out here like i was coming out here and like just freestyling on radio stations going on whatever radio station i could because that's how i got big in london you know i didn't get big because i got signed to a label i got big because i had my fucking my macbook in my rucksack <laughs> and i just kept making beats and just spitting bars on it so like um yeah to me this is just like organic it's, it's, it's nice that it's happening and I feel like I'm not I'm not yeah I'm not like the, the at the forefront I'm just like probably the person who knows their self the most um that's very interesting um is there anything specifically um that's happened in your life that made you kind of actually start getting to know yourself and feel comfortable as opposed to kind of trying for lack of a better word yeah this girl that I was with before, like a, like, like a while ago, a couple of years ago, she had a miscarriage. You know what I'm saying? I was about to have a child and shit. She had a miscarriage and like, I remember, I remember at the time, like wanting to have a child, like, and I was thinking, wow, this is gonna be crazy. Like, I couldn't even. You're at the stage where you can't tell no one and shit. So like, when that happened, like, I was like, yo, like, I lost, I lost something that I really wanted and all this other stuff that I'm chasing. I don't, I would give it all up for that. You get what I'm saying? So it was a point where I just didn't care. Like, I didn't care about much anymore. I didn't care about myself, didn't care about anything. I was just like, I'm just gonna go with my rucks like everywhere and just like make what I wanna make because like tomorrow, 
like is not promised to anyone and just, as like time's just gone on you get me there's this bare stuff just happened and it makes me it reinforces like yo this like all this other stuff is bullshit like the game and stuff the game is like what is that who is the game was this made by the radio or it's made by the whoever. industry yeah it's made by people who want to bring people through and make people think that they can do what i do and almost make me think like i can't do what they do you know what i'm saying like so I just didn't, obviously, I mean, the girl ain't together anymore, but it just taught me a lesson, you know what I'm saying? It taught me a lesson at the time. Just over time, things have happened. I lost one of my close friends, and it just, like I said, it just reinforces, like, I just don't give a shit that much. Well, I was going to say that, um, I actually found out after the fact, I wanted to send you my condolences, that I saw you the day that you lost a, a dear friend of yours mm. recently, because I was on the same festival that you were at. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found out after the fact that you had lost someone that day. So I, I want to say I wanted to give you my condolences. Yeah. Um, you know this is uh, this is a challenging thing. Um, we just watched. I just watched Joey Badass go through a very similar thing where he lost someone very close to him as he was in the kind of in the middle of, of finishing up his album and really pursuing. Um, how do you? How do you deal with that loss while you're still you can't really slow down right now? Like this is your moment. Like your friend wouldn't want you to slow down right now. So how do you take those emotions and continue to just really push hard right now? It's crazy. Like, I, that, that question you ask me, I ask myself every day. How do I do it? You get me? Like I don't know what I'm doing. It's autopilot. Like I'm out here. It's like a dream. I don't know what's going on. I'm going to shows. The shows that my whole tour sold out is five dates. But like is sold out, like off my turf, you get what I'm saying, on my own music, like like the universe will throw something like that into my lap and then throw that into my lap at the same time. So I get to go to wireless with Drake and come out and like he makes 50,000 people put up lights from my bridge and it just passed, you get me? So mm. it's just like mad energies that I'm dealing with, but I know that it wouldn't be given to me if I couldn't deal with it, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's something that I have to step up, like everything in my life that I've ever got to a point and I'm like, yo, this is gonna break me and I have to step past it, you know what I'm saying? Even though like, I know there's gonna be a time when I think of my friend and it's gonna make me happy. I'm just in that time where it's like, oh, whatever. But still at the same time, like you said, I know in my head what he would want me to do and I stay doing it. Well, that's, but that's deep that you even said that because um, when I've only been through loss once, my wife lost her brother. We went through this and everyone would say that. They'd go, they go one day, you're gonna think of Spencer and you're gonna smile. Mm. Even though right now all you can do is cry. Mm -hmm. And I gotta tell you, um, it's been um, 2011, 20, it's been over four years now. And you know, it, you never, the person never comes back. You lose a piece of you and that piece is gone forever and mm. the level to which you can attain happiness is different now because that person's not a part of it. Mm -hmm. But that all being said, I will say this, me and my wife spend, I mean, countless hours just talking about her brother and laughing. Like, that's all we, like, that's like our, honestly, it's one of our favorite pastimes is being like, we both bring up him, his name, just to smile. Mm -hmm. So it is odd, and when you're in the moment, it's very hard to get there, but the fact that you even are aware of it mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. a good sign. All right. Yo, tomorrow I'm gonna come scoop you, eh? We'll go to business. Yeah, for sure. All right. There you have it, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Yeah. You already know by now, uh, shut down by Skepta. How's that feel, man? You got a big... Does it feel cool like when you're in the States, even though it's not something you would strive for, to see international success and that people gravitate towards that record still must feel good? Yeah, like it's, it's, bro, it's mad. It's just like, a, I keep saying, it's like a dream. It's like, obviously I've, I've been around the world and I've performed, but it's like I'm going to shows and they're, they're singing like all of my lyrics off my mixtapes. Like my lyrics from freestyles that I dropped like two, three weeks ago. I just dropped it just now, like literally. And I'm got on a plane like seven hours away, and like this in the crowd saying it back to me. It's like a fucking dream. Yeah, like how can you even know what I just did? I just came up with this idea. It's mad. So, so take us back. I think the moment of like, uh, what's that word called? Um, when the moment when everything sort of changed and went to another level mm. was the day I woke up uh, after the Brit Awards. Maybe I saw it. Maybe I saw it like trending that day. You know, it was like five hours ahead, and I saw it. it's like Skepta's at the at the Brit Awards. All these grime artists at the Brit Awards. Um, you came on stage with Kanye West. Mm. It was a big deal. Tell me a about that experience and how it came to pass, and how Kanye West became aware uh, and really knew about what your movement was. Um, yeah, yeah he's, he's right hand. He's, he's right hand Virgil, Virgil Abloh. Like he's like. Um, yeah, he just stays, he just stays out there listening to what's happening. And like, 
he was the person that I met. <clears throat> he was the person that I met first. Like, he used to just show, like show me like all the songs of mine that he liked and my brothers like, and all the music that he liked from the scene that I'm in, and just like basically like just telling me, you know, like this is what this is what people don't know about you. This is the stuff that people laugh about you, laugh at you about. You know what I'm saying? What were some of those? What did he tell you? Just like my accent and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, but he was like, "That's that's your identity, though." Like, so just carry on doing it. Like, just carry on doing what you're doing. Like, it might feel that people always be like, "Oh, like I can't understand you," or like I don't understand what he's saying. But, bro, we don't understand what like young Fug says. We don't understand what someone from New York speaks can completely different to Chief Keith. You know, I couldn't understand what Keith was saying when he first started, but I liked the story. He was giving me the story so raw and so like real that I had to, I, I want to know what he's saying. You know what I'm saying? And that's how it is. Like, I don't, I'm not out here trying to make no one listen to me and stuff like that. Like, so he was like, yo, really like embody yourself. Like embody like being like a London street guy. Like no one does that. Everyone's always from London's always trying to be something else. You know, so through me and him, he showed me, like, he introduced me to Ye. Like, he just called me one day and was like, oh, yeah, like, we're in a studio in London, come through. And I came, I went there, and I just started working. Like, I didn't go in there on, for nothing else than just to work. And I think, like, through him seeing how, like, my work rate, he just, like, went, we went studio, like, a bunch of times, went to the Brits together and stuff. And just, just, just keep it organic, man. I'm not trying to, like, I don't really want to, force anything between us or anything you know but I'm I definitely appreciative for him bringing us up there that day you, you use the word work rate mm. which is interesting because the only time I ever hear the word work rate is in professional wrestling everyone always talks about work rate like mm. what made a great wrestler in the 80s versus a great wrestler now is like well, well the work rate was way different people were working way more mm. what's your work rate like in the studio like, are you just one of those guys who's really able to knock records out no no I'm not like that I'm not like one of those guys, but I live in my studio. My bed's like on the floor, like in and all my studios around me. I got like a small box room in London, like it's nothing fancy. But um, so you're just a rat. You're a studio rat. Yeah, it's like it's good for me to do all this stuff and then go back to that to sleep on the floor, you know. Like I can just go back to that little box room that I have as like a shit room, but like it makes me comfortable. It makes me like I remember what I'm supposed to be doing and stuff, and like um. Yeah, you know, it happens to artists all the time. They have a big song and they end up touring. They tour that song for so long, that song just gets attached to them and that's all people know of them. You know, I don't ever want to be like that. So I, I try and find a balance between like, yeah, studio and doing live shows and keep that work rate high. Because there's always that studio rap. Like now, there's some, there's like people in London now thinking, nah, I'm taking Skepta out. Like, Fuck that! Like he can't be the like I'm. So if, while I'm here, in a in a someone's club party, working. Yeah, someone's going hard, and I I, I know they're out there because I was one of those before. So I just don't never let myself slip. They're watching on YouTube right now. They're like he's schmoozing with Rosenberg. I'm in the fucking lab yeah, right now. But yeah. you ain't ever. That's funny. I saw DJ Mustard the other day, and his quote to me, I was like, man, things are going good. You just like keep getting bigger. Everyone keeps waiting for it to end, mm -hmm. and it won't end for you. You keep going. And Mustard was like, yo, I got the key. And if someone wants this fucking key to the game, they're gonna have to come steal it from me. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not letting go. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And, and and that's all exactly about that is like continuing to go after it. Have you gotten any sage advice from someone like Dizzy? Um, you know, who's the, the true OG? No, no. And this has all been your own map that you're I ain't figuring got no out. No advice from Dizzy. I ain't got no advice. Do you guys have a relationship? You mean Dizzy? No. Yeah. No. Um, what about anyone else that we know of from the UK? SAS? Any of the people have come before you? No, Wiley. Wiley's the only person who's ever like. I always looked up to him before I started because I was DJing before I did. Well, I jumped on the microphone to get me, but like he was the person who really, even when he had the chance to like just switch his life up and change up on everyone, like he would always be around people like trying to tell them like do this and do that, and just having him around me and seeing that it was from his laptop in his backpack to the studio, to the stage, to the record deal. Just knowing that there was nobody in between him and the money, you know, like that was that was inspiration just seeing him, you know. How, how serious were you as a DJ? Like were you popping or were you just trained and you did it here and there? No, my crew was popping, Meridian crew, cause Jamie, I was DJing for my brother. Oh, okay. And, and we was on, we were like, we're from North London, but like Grime predominantly had 
East London um, crews, but like we were the only North London crew like that was on that big station, you know. So um, yeah, I was doing my thing, but like um, there was a shooting, a shooting happened in my estate, and the police like the police took someone was writing some raps about shooting someone. Like, so then they just took all my records and like, they were like, just being dicks, like. They literally took your records? Yeah, they took my records and they were like, oh, we're gonna fucking investigate. We're gonna investigate like everything on the on the vinyl because someone's writing raps about a shooting. So we must be able to find out some more evidence on your vinyl. Just being police and talking shit, trying to take, fuck me up. So they took my stuff. And like, yeah, they took it. And then I, I, I had like, I had nothing to do. I was like, I'm just walking around. I don't have no vinyl to do. So then I just started rapping. Wow, Wiley, that is crazy. It was Wiley's fault. He told me to write my first grime lyric. I didn't really think, I didn't really like grime. It was a bit too like, like in the early day, it was really child's play. The lyric was really like, oh yeah, crowd, like get hype, girls, ladies, crew, drink champagne, like. It was more of that, like when it, so I didn't really like it, but. Well, you you were more into traditional rhymes, like about yeah, things with. Yeah, I grew with up on like Biggie Smalls and like Tupac, like telling stories, like telling a story about something, you know. And there was no stories, and it was all like microphone juggling, like have a good time. So when I first came into into music, you know, I was just telling mad stories, and I think that's what separated me from other people. Um. Who else in this moment right now? And I do think that this is a really great moment where. You have a lot of artists from the UK who ins- who are not trying to be American. Y'all are just being who you are, and people are starting to gravitate mm. towards it. Um, Crept and Conan just dropped their album last week. Mm. Um, is there anyone else, who else out there in the, in the game right now that you think is worth uh, taking note of? Um, ev- like everyone's doing good stuff. Like I really like Section Boys. You get me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I really like Section Boys. I think they've got something strong. Um, there's just so many people that do it in London now. I think like it's just a time in the world where because of the internet and how open-minded everyone's being, there's so many people out there being themselves, you know, so many people out there just doing what they want to do. And like, you can literally just go, so you guys have like, I don't know, World Star or something like we have like GRM Daily, yes, Spiff TV, like you can go on uh, Link Up TV, you can go on there and it's just, you can just, get lost in it man you know what I'm saying there's so much sick MCs in London right now just going hard do you feel the pressure though of like I mean I know like it crosses my mind I generally always ask people about other people um, Mm. because I'm curious to know especially when you have an opportunity to put someone on Mm -hmm. are you aware of the pressure of like at this point you've become such a thing now that even you deciding to say someone's name means something and someone's gonna go why didn't you say my name and Mm. are are you aware of that like are you do you have to think about moving in that way now that skepta has become such a a thing yeah i i used to think like that i used to think oh who am i name but like i'm not gonna lie like to do what i do like to do because like london's a very small place so like see like everything that you do if I make a song that's literally two beats per minute out of the tempo of like something, everyone's ready to jump on you. Like, and that's what London's like. Like, you can't do anything. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't even. Like, I can't explain it. It's crazy. It's like it's like a prison in London. How small it is. Yeah, it's like small, but everyone knows everyone's business, and like you have to like be a certain way, otherwise you you get outcasted from that genre, or you can't MC with that guy. But to do what I do or what I've done in the past like couple years I've had to free myself from that you know what I'm saying I've had to free myself of all ties of like the industry like or all ties of like these rules that are just out there like oh yeah whose name are you gonna say oh don't shut like I am me there's nothing else I can be you know what I'm saying so like I used to think like that but now I'm just like I listen to section boys like I, that's what I listen to we not, I'm not I'm not shining them out because I want, I'm saying they're next up I'm saying that's I'm, what you fuck with you're yeah, something you're fucking with I listen to them to get me um yeah a hundred percent uh when are we gonna get a Skepta album um I was talking about this yesterday at first I was trying to put my album out this year like earlier this year March you know and like when everything started happening and I, and I never had a manager up until just before shutdown so I did Ain't Safe and That's Not Me by myself <clears throat> and like I kind of didn't want I was like raw like I did that on my own why do I need a manager for but then like all the emails and stuff like it was getting on my nerves you get me so I got a manager <laughs> that's a good thing about a manager I mean <laughs> the intercepting emails which are fucking annoying yeah I got a manager and like 
as soon as I got her and I'm talking like, yo, I'm trying to put my album out, like, did it? She was like, what are you doing? Like, why would you do that? Like, just let's go around the world and give out samples, you know, like a, like a, like a shot. Let's go and give out samples around the world and make people take the samples and be like, yo, like, yeah, okay, I like that food. You get me? When's that food coming out? I want more of that. Yeah, yeah. like, when's that food coming out? So, like, she's really, like, put me in a comfortable place. I'm not trying to say, like, I'm basically, I'm, like, I don't care and I'm being nonchalant about the album. But, like, the pressure to put it out now has been put like to the size I'm, I'm more about traveling i've got a couple more tours i'm doing an australian tour at the end of the year i go to um, japan to do some stuff out there and like i'm just waiting for the right time to put it out i got a mixtape with westwood that's dropping really yeah we did some we did some we did a fire tape still oh so mm. that and that's so that's still there that's, that's done out. that's new music that's coming out in a minute i got a new song and a new mixtape dropping oh like, my god westwood is going to be going hamburger for this tape that's the that's the legend right there. Well, sure is saying, he so. is going to be that because that moment he must be as excited as anyone could possibly be i know that he always thinks like because obviously like time's moving on in it and like he probably thinks that people will but I want to show him that, like, I don't, I, I don't forget stuff, and I have a blueprint in my head of how I want my stuff to come out and what I want it to, how classic I want it. Do you get what I'm saying? So when I've called him, he was like, "Bro, are you serious?" I'm like, "Yeah, I want to do my mixtape." So we put a tape together, old bars, new bars, new songs, unreleased songs, like, just put it together. But it's coming out. We're supposed to get when we, we supposed to have gotten when we landed in the states. That is very exciting. All right, so yeah. we'll look forward to a Tim Westwood Skepta project. Yeah, it's his tape of me. You get what I'm saying? But yeah, that's dropping. And um, yeah, I'm just going to be releasing freestyles. Like even like since shutdown, I released Nasty. I did that in the club yesterday. They're going crazy. They know that. I released back then. They're going crazy for that as well. So I'm not stopping. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to hold my album out and not release stuff. I'll just I'll keep releasing things and like keep spitting bars. Now, like yeah. you said, London London is a small place, like you said. And you know, I know you have relationships with like everyone who frequents London, who's cool. Like mm -hmm. I know you know the zombie as well. Mm -hmm. They put you on a record. Honest, they were early, put mm -hmm. you on a record. Mm -hmm. um, I know you know World's Fair. I know you know everyone who really has spent a lot of time Rat there. King. ASAP Mob, Rat yeah. King, mm -hmm. um, exactly. All these cats who've uh, spent time there. I also know MMG is huge in London, right? Mm -hmm. Like I mean, when you're playing out in London, I played two records back to back. You wanna play, you wanna get the place crazy? play shut down and then play like i'm a boss or like a, a, a traditional mmg smash people go crazy i also know you're very close with drake does it put you in an awkward circumstance again i know you say it, you've been saying you don't you're really not playing the politics game mm. you're friends with your friends with you're cool with you're cool with it's mm. put i'm not gonna lie it's put me it's put all of us sort of in an awkward circumstance mm. but it's also fun from a rap perspective mm -hmm. to a degree too so what's been your your take on this whole thing yeah when when somebody it's, this is like, it's not surprising. This stuff happens in the hood, isn't it? Like, when somebody jumps out and starts talking off their mouth, you put everyone else in a position where it's like, yo, man, what, like, why did you do that? You know what I'm saying? Why did you do that? Because now everyone's in a mad position. Then what they normally say is, I don't care. I don't care what position I put everyone in. I wanted to say that. You know what I'm saying? So whatever Meek's done and whatever bridges he's burnt between him and my man, like my man's given him a song done the first verse, done the chorus, giving him like, giving him a song, gave him Rico and said, you get me, like, go and eat. Go take your man them on tour, go and like, go and eat some more food, like, you know what I'm saying? Take this, hold that. And a man's just burnt a bridge over, like, what, what I know is over a tweet. I hope that now the bridge is burnt, like, can live with it, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause he's gonna have people like us be like, yo, man, like, we're in a position or whatever, whatever, so. Whatever he's done, he just has, that's what it's like in the game, innit? You say, or not even in the game, like in the streets or whatever, you, you do something, you better stand by it, you get me? Because the bridge is burnt and it's what it is now. But I'm not involved. I like that back to back. You track. enjoy the rap part. Yeah. Like just getting to see some good rap, some bars yeah. is fun. Because that's where I come from, where I've been clashing. Like my first my first grime record I ever did was I clashed like 12, 13, man. I dissed like 13, 14 man on the tune and just put it out. So I definitely know about being you know in that so I, I i like i like it i like that back to did that any record. of those relationships of the 13 or 14 men you slaughtered in one t at one time have mm. any of those things become cool since yeah like over time like everything smoothed up but at the time like, they didn't know who i was like i said i'm from north london and most of the stuff most of the crews are from east, east london. london so there was a stage when i'm i'm going to shows with straps 
like I'm going to a show with a strap and I'm, I sit here now thinking about it, I'm just like, why would I put myself in a position where I've got to go to a show with a strap? But right. it's like the last thing you would want to do now. Like, it doesn't what? make any sense. Like I'm trying to do music to get off the streets, you know what I'm saying? So, but like at the time, like I understand, I understand what I was doing, you know, but like, yeah, I, I'm from a place where clashing happens, so it's cool. Well, and grime, that is also a thing too. Like it's that's massive. A, people don't it's even. That's the main thing. I exactly. I didn't. So I interviewed Stormzy a while ago, and and he was talking to me about that, and he talking about how like he had like this one refrain. People might have one refrain that they use a lot. So when you battle, so when you go up and you do your thing, mm. you do new bars, mm. but you do have one go to thing that you go to that people may know, right? So mm -hmm. like, it was very interesting, like culturally is totally different here because now in America, and you know this well, you study the game, it's completely separate. There are rappers and there's the battle world and mm. they almost don't intersect mm -hmm. at all. Mm. Y'all are all rappers, but you're also prepared to get on records next to other rappers mm -hmm. and show out and shut people down, no pun intended. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, yeah, that's the, that's, it's the whole approach to the, like, to the music, grime. Like, it's a, cause remember we were, we were, we, we we started in pirate radio stations, like setting up radio stations in like your friend's mum's kitchen, like, and putting it at the area on the top of the flats, like, and having like, I don't know, whatever mile radius around you where people could pick it up on the dial. You know what I'm saying? That's where we started off. We're in the room together, spitting a 16 bar, then someone takes it off you on an instrumental and says he's one after you. So we've come from a place where passing the mic on to whatever someone says after you. So if I'm finished my lyric and he takes the mic and he starts his bar with, that bar you spat was just shit. I'm like, yo, okay, so I've got to come back. So it's always been that, but it's like a dance hall approach. And you know? we, we get, we've got that dance hall, spit your lyric and get a reload culture of, you know, yes music. the clash yeah the clash in in hip-hop in america i feel like that's been a fantasy for the last 10 years and like we just talk about like imagine if the rappers we liked actually sat in a room with each other it, it's fantasy it's not even real life like mm. it's it only used to happen when you'd see like you look like that an old clip right and you find an old cypher mm, mm. from years ago now the only cyphers we have and god bless bet for doing it but the only ones we have are staged and it's your own crew and yeah. you're just doing when, I, when I watch the cyphers when i see cy the bet cyphers i'm like yeah that's the closest like that I see out here to what we have, like really waiting for your turn on the microphone and trying to be the best, you know? Um, anyone else out there that you would love to work with? Obviously you have a very close relationship with Drake. Mm. It's well documented. Mm. Um, you guys just jumped on a record together. Mm -hmm. Me yeah. and e me, uh, Ebro, I can't speak for you. Well, I will speak for you. Me and Ebro both felt, I felt and you agreed. Mm. Uh, shut down remix featuring Drake would be a uh, mage. Has that ever been talked yeah, about? Yeah, when I first brought out shut down, he was he was saying like, "Yo, like da 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 da." But I just didn't, cause he was on the sample already. I didn't want to make it just be about him, you know. But like, yeah, we've had a chance to work together, and like, yeah, I just like I've been saying, I just like I like organic stuff. I like to let when life, it fits and it goes. It yeah, goes. I like life to just make things, you know, connect and happen together. So we've had a chance to work together, and he's obviously from Toronto. I'm from London, and you guys are like country cousins. And then we took it to we took it to Nigeria. You know what I'm saying? Like took it to Africa, and to me, like. That's, that to me, that's everything to me, man. Like I was saying yesterday to Ebro, I want to change the game, you get what I'm saying? I don't want to play the game. I don't really care about the game. I want to change it to be like what we're doing. So it is my game, I'm playing my own game, you know? So to take it to Africa and have, you know, people in Nigeria who would see, like I can imagine how someone who lives in America, how they look at Drake. Someone in Africa, how they look at Drake is a mad thing. You get what I'm saying? He's a different, like, they're thinking that's different, like, a level. So, for me to be able to almost A&R that together, you get what I'm saying? I met him when he was in the hood with me, like, Drake and them, like, them old, I, I like those guys, man. You get what I'm saying? They used to come to my hood, like, in the grease. You get me? Be about the man, them, like, chill. And, like, that was the song we was banging because we just lost our, our good, like, one of our main 
like one of our main people in our gang you know what I'm saying so that song thanking God for life I can't explain was like it was the it was, it was all we were listening to so when he was there and he was like yo come we jump on it like to me that's like that's how I like to make music I don't want to be like oh yeah I know you Drake let's try and make a beat and make something to chart and do all that kind of stuff like that stuff will happen you know what I'm saying if the relationship stays organic and honest and consistent like it's that stuff will happen I'm not scared of that like it will come but you know yeah music's coming Definitely. All right, this this has been very very good, man. Very interesting for, for me to learn about you and other people as well. Congratulations, super happy for everything. Uh, looking forward to more. Take me out for some delicious, uh, if we can, some sort of delicious snack the next time I'm in London. What's that? I'll take you out. Yeah, put me on to some place. I mean, I've had a couple of delicious meals. Unless I know London is not. People don't rave about the food in London, but I also know there's some low key hood spots that are delish. Yeah, no, I know some good places to eat. So put me on, because my only priority is when I get to foreign countries is food. You're a fat fuck. That's right. Thank you, you bro. It's food and records. All right, yo, Skepta. Fat piece of shit. Yeah. All right, enough. Yo, congrats on everything, Skepta. Thank, thank you, brother. Thank you very much, man. Big up everybody that's fucking showing love and support out here, man. Respect. Boy, better know forever. Respect.